What's up, Power Appers? I bet you, if you're watching this video, you're kind of freaking out right now, right? And I bet you're freaking out because somebody joined your company, they made a Power App, now they don't work with your company anymore, and you need to edit that Power App or delete it or move it to another environment or something you need to do with it, upgrade it. I don't know what the case may be, but I bet you that's why you landed on this video. So the good news is there is hope. You can change the owner for that Power App, probably to your account if you're the one looking at this video, and then you can get in there and edit the Power App and do whatever you want. So that's what I'm going to show you how to do in this video, how to change the owner for a Power App. Let's get started. Travis, what's up, man? This one's going out to you since you asked for it. Something like that? <laughs> I hope you like it, man. Here's some different ways that I know you can use to change who a Power Apps owner is. Now, at the beginning of this video, I put out a hypothetical business scenario where someone joins your company, they create a Power App, then they leave the company and the, their account no longer exists, and now you need to change ownership for that Power App. In that case, approach number one and number two I have here will not work because you would need to be able to log in with the owner of the Power Apps account to use either one of those approaches. You would need to use approach number three with PowerShell to actually change the app's owner. I'm going to demonstrate all three of these different processes now in this video, and you can choose the one that makes the most sense for you. So let's get started with number one. Number one is we don't actually change the owner of the Power App, but instead we clone the Power App and we assign a new owner to the Power App that we've cloned. So to do this, what you're going to want to do is export the Power App. To do so, you have to log in as the owner of that Power App to the Power Apps uh, editor. You have to locate the Power App there and choose the option to export it. After you have exported it, then you're going to log into the Power Apps portal with the intended owner account for the Power App. And then you're going to import that package that you exported. As you import the new Power App, you will then select Create New for the option of how you wish to import the app. And so what this will do is it will clone the app or duplicate the app. Now you have two of them. One of them will still belong to the initial owner for the Power App, and the new one that you just imported will now be owned by the user you used to import it. So let's see how that works now. Okay, so check it out. On the left side here in this browser window, I am logged in with this user right here, Janice Galvin. And on the right side, I'm logged in with my tenant admin, both for my same dev Office 365 tenant. On the left side, Janice has created this great app right here. You can see she is the owner and she made it one minute ago. Let's go ahead and run this great app and check it out. There's her great app. So we have this great power app. And in option one, what we're going to demonstrate here is how we export this Power App to change the owner of it so that the other user, in this case, the user on the, in the uh, right side web browser, can become the owner for that Power App. So the first way to go about this is to select the Power App, like you've done here, after you've logged in with the owner account, and pick Export. Then... give it a name, and then this is the key point down here under this review package content in the import setup, pick create as new, and then hit save, then finally click export. 
Now you can see that it has exported the Power App and it's downloaded it. And I can go right here and browse to that particular file that it's downloaded. So here we can see our great app exported zip file that was created. And so now what we can do to actually change the owner is go to our other web browser where we're logged in with the intended owner of this Power App and we can pick import package. We can then go upload that particular one and I'll just head over here and select the same one we just exported. And now we're importing that Power App. Here we can see on the import page that the import setup step is already set is create as new. Since that's the case, we'll just click the import button here. And now we have imported this particular power app. While that's importing, if I come back to the list of power apps that we have on the left hand side and I look at the great app, I can see under the share area here, that Janice is the owner, like we knew from the start, but no one else has access to it. Now, this package has been successfully imported. We can now look in the list of apps here, and we can see a copy of the great app. And if we look at the share here, we will see that the tenant admin is now the owner, and it's the only person there. So that's first way you can go about changing the owner for a power app by duplicating it and when you import it uh, using the owner which you wish to be the owner in the future. So now we've seen how we can actually change the owner, not really change it, but clone the app and assign a new owner to the new app we've cloned. Let's move on now and take a look at number two. Number two is the simplest option and this is to use the share functionality built into Power Apps to make another user a co-owner. Let's do that now. Okay, so let's take a look at the second way now that we can change the ownership of a Power App. And this one is actually by granting somebody the co-owner rights. So the first thing that I'm going to do though is I'm going to clean up that one we just did before. And I'm going to delete that copy of the, the great power app there. And now we're gonna come back over here. And again, here I am, and the, you can see here, this is Janice. Janice is the person who created the power app. And so, if I go to the share here on the left, you can see that Janice is the owner of the power app, but my user on the right, my tenant admin, does not have access to this particular power app. So step two is very easy. You go just like I did here before, select the power app in the list and pick share. Then in here, type in the name of the account that you wish to share it with. There we go. And there's my tenant admin account. After you've selected the user, then you want to click this checkbox here for co-owner. You can send an email invitation if you want to those users or not, and then click the share button. Now, the tenant admin is a co-owner with Janice Galvin. And if we refresh the page on the right side of the screen, we will now see that there it is. Janice is the owner, but if we look, we can also see that here we are, the tenant admin is a co-owner. The tenant admin could then uh, you'd think go delete Janice as the owner, but look, that option does not come up. The co-owner cannot take over ownership from the original owner, and that is something important to point out with this aspect of Power Apps. Finally, the method of using PowerShell to actually change the app's owner really does change the app's owner from its previous owner to a new one. Let's look at how we can use PowerShell to change the previous owner to a new user and watch what happens to the previous owner account and how they become just a regular user and how also previous users of the Power App still remain users of the Power App as well.
This is probably the approach that you actually are looking for in this video in the event that the user who is the owner of the current Power App you wish to change no longer has an account or exists at your company. In my final example here, I'm going to do a little bit of cleanup again, and I'm going to remove the tenant admin as the cone owner from this Power App and update. Now, Janice again is the only owner, and as you can see when I refresh the page here, the tenant admin no longer has access to this Power App at all. So now what I'm going to use is PowerShell to actually transfer ownership of this great app that right now is owned by Janice. And I'm going to completely transfer that ownership from Janice's account to my tenant admin account. I'd like to also point out something else while I do this. Let's pretend Janice had also given access to other users. For example, in this case, Janice gave access to the user Katie Jordan, and she shared the Power App with Katie. Now, Janice is an owner, and Katie is a user of the Power App. We're going to see how both of these accounts respond when we go run the PowerShell to actually change the ownership of this Power App. Let's take a look at how we do this now inside of PowerShell. One thing you can't see on the other screen is I'm right clicking my shortcut to PowerShell and I'm picking run as administrator. And here's what my PowerShell window looks like when I do that. After I've done that, the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to start running some different commands actually that will allow me to change the owner for my Power App. So first I'm going to run these two commands here. These commands add in the PowerShell commandlets for Power Apps. And so I've already run them, so you're not going to see anything happen. Have you not run them before? Then you'll need to type the letter A to accept all and then hit the enter button and it will install them. It's a very simple process. The next thing that we're going to do is we're going to run this commandlet, add Power Apps account. Add Power Apps account opens up a brand new window and it asks me to sign in. Essentially what I'm doing is I'm authenticating here and I'm specifying which user I want to execute these commands as. So I'm going to log in here with the account, the tenant admins account as you can see in the top right for this particular Power Apps environment. This tenant admin is also an environment admin in Power Apps and it has the ability to do everything I need to do, such as changing the owner of the account. So I'm going to sign in. Now I've signed in with that particular user. Now I'm ready to move on to the next piece. The next thing I'm going to need is my apps ID and the environment ID. Check out the environment ID. See this string right here? I copied it from up here. I copied this from right inside of my Power Apps environment. So this string right there is the environment string that I'm going to need in my PowerShell command. The other string that I'm going to need is the app ID. And there's a few different ways you can go about getting the app ID. The first one, if you can run the Power App, is just to click on the Power App and open it up and run it. And then at the end of this URL here, after %2f, that string right there is your app ID. And another way to get at your app ID is to come in here and select details. And here's the app ID again. So you can copy it from either place. I just copied it from right here. I'm now going to take that value and I'm going to stick it in here along with the environment ID. So here's the actual command we're going to run to rename, I'm uh, not rename, re-establish who's the owner of the Power App. It's set admin Power App owner. You pass in the name of the app, the app owner, which in this case I'm just going to use the current user's sessions, user ID. So I logged in with the admin at candy3.onmicrosoft.com account when we ran this particular one, and that means that this equates to that person's user ID. 
That's who's going to become my new app owner. The person I logged in with after I ran the add Power Apps account commandlet. The final thing that I do is I need to specify the environment name. So let's try it out. That app we have is called the great app, right? So let's put that in for app name. And then the user ID is already in there for my app owner and then the environment name I've already copied and pasted that in as well so let's see what happens if we run this command so I'm gonna go back to the PowerShell window now and I'm gonna run that command and uh oh look at that bad request the reason you're getting bad request is because you my example here I passed in the the readable display name of the app. Although the parameter is called app name, it's really looking for the GUID that represents the app ID. So you want to make your command look like this. But let me show you one more thing before we actually rename it with that command. Notice how I have this Power App open in the editor. Okay? And now I'm going to go run this command right here. Head back to PowerShell, and I'm going to put that command in, and I'm going to run it. Uh-oh, conflict. Doesn't give me a lot to go on, does it? I have determined that what this conflict means is it's a conflict due to the fact that you're editing the app. You can't rename it if you're editing it. You'll get the same, or you can't repurpose who the owner is if you're editing it. So what you need to do is close your Power App. Now that that Power App is closed, and we've left that page, now I'm just going to hit the up arrow here to run that same exact command we ran before, and we're going to have success. When you see no code or description come back in just this internal spot, this data right down here, that means it worked. So now if we come back over to the right side and we refresh the page, we can now see that the owner is this person, the tenant admin, and they have access to the app. If we come back and we refresh our list of apps on this page, back where we started in Janice's account, you can see she is no longer the owner. She doesn't have permission to share anything because she's not the owner. So let's take a look at what permissions have been affected here. We can see Janice has been taken from the owner role and now she's a user. Katie remained a user just like she did before and now the tenant admin is set as the owner of the Power App. So that sums it up on three different ways that you can change the owner or pseudo change the owner of a Power App. Thanks again for watching. I hope that was helpful for you. You know what to do. Hit that subscribe button. Hit the bell too. You'll get notifications whenever I drop a new video. Would you like to work together sometime? I work with folks we met through these YouTube videos all the time. Check me out over on canvas.com. If you'd like to see some more cool videos about power apps or other technology, check them out down here. Hope you have a good one.